Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to my fly tying channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. So I put this channel together to share my love of salmon flies and fly tying. Uh, there's a little bit of something for everybody here. Um, I do showcase a lot of, you know, uh, very artsy, very um, specific, um, hard to tie salmon flies. But I also do tie a lot of, uh, you know, Pacific Northwest patterns, spay flies, D flies, things like that. So if you've got any uh, flies that you'd like to see tied, uh, something that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, by all means, please reach out to me, leave a message, um, comment in my videos, um, just leave a request. I'm happy to get to them. Uh, now, all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Let's get on with it. All right, so here we are over at the um, table. And as you can see, these are the feathers we're going to be discussing today. This is going to be uh, about Indian crow, Cotinga, and toucan. Um, first thing with, we're going to start with Indian crow. Now the first thing to know about Indian crow is that there are several subspecies. Uh, there is Pyrodius, Scatatus, Scatatus, which is what this species is. But then there's also uh, Pyrodius, Scatatus, Granadensis, Orensensis, Occidentalis, and Masani. Um, the last four are a little bit harder to come by. Uh, Indian crow in general is not easy to obtain. Um, I, I, there is some that is, you know, pretty readily on eBay, but, um, you know, they're not exactly cheap. Um, as you can see here, these are a relatively nice size. Uh, let me grab a hook real quick and we can kind of compare size based on a hook. Maybe it's just a little bit easier. Let's see. Okay, so this is a 4.0 Harrison Bartlett. So as you can see by the size of the hook, these are relatively large compared to that. Um, for proper use, um, the size that we would use on a hook that like that would probably be more around this size or maybe this size here and have the tie-in point right here. Um, these would be ideal, I think, for a hook this size, depending on what you're doing. The majority of the time it would be like a tail veiling or a cheek or um, you know, body veiling on like a barren. Um, here's a couple others. You can see the colors are a little bit different and that could vary from bird to bird. It can vary from where on the bird it came from. Um, but these here would be kind of your best colors. Seeing so, you know, how the bright red tips and that nice light, almost a orange cream color and then blending into the black. Now because of the price of these, typically they run anywhere from seven to twelve dollars per feather, depending on where you buy them from uh, and depending on the size. So um, you know they're they're not a, a cheap feather, and it's really best if you're starting out um, to get yourself some Indian crow subs. Um, there's a couple of guys that make really wonderful subs. One of them is David Kerr out of Northern Ireland. And you can reach him right on Facebook. Um, he's in a lot of the fly tying rooms, including the uh, Lamont fly tying page. Now these are some of the subs that he makes right here. Put this guy back. So as you can see, uh, creating an Indian crow sub, first of all, is not an easy task. Uh, I, I believe that these feathers here that he uses are magpie. Um, another feather that's used often is um, ring neck pheasant, the white ring around the neck. Uh, they take that and they dye that. Um, it's not something I've tackled yet, but it's something I do intend to work on. But as you can see, you know, he's got that that yellow base here, uh, almost the cream, and then the red tips. You know, when you put them in a fly, they actually do look quite nice. And the other 
is Ryan Houston. Ryan Houston also makes a fantastic sub. I know there's a couple other guys out there that uh, also make Indian Crow subs. Um, Lars Mahler is one. Um, now these here were made by Ryan Houston. And now uh, you can actually look at these and look at David Kerr's. And you can see the slight difference. Um, I believe Ryan Houston uses the, in, the ring neck pheasant, where, as I said, David Kerr uses magpie. But again, it's a pretty close sub, and when you look at it from the side, you really do get that nice profile of the, you know, the, the black, the lighter uh, metal, and then the red tips. These can all be found, you know, just uh, reach out to Ryan Houston, reach out to David Kerr. Um, I know Ryan Houston's run out pretty quick, and David Kerr does smaller batches uh, individually. So if uh, you need some, you know, let these guys know, and I'm sure they can they'd be more than happy to accommodate you. The other one is Lars Mahler, as I had said. Um, I just recently picked up some of his. His are also a nice color. They're, they're a different color though. These, to me, look like they would imitate more of a uh, Granadensis than they would a Scatatus. Um, the Granadensis has much less of the black in the stem, um, whereas the Scatatus has more of the black in the stem. And as you can see, uh, it looks like he may be using magpie as well. Though these here, yeah, I'd say these are magpie. The uh, ring neck has a habit of, has a tendency to be a little bit more flat across the top. Whereas the uh, magpie seems to have be a bit more rounded. Um, I haven't had a chance to use these yet, but I'm looking very much forward to uh, giving these a try soon. I'm going to put these back in their package. Now when it comes to use of these, um, Indian Crow in general is for the most part relatively easy to work with. Um, same thing with um, you know the substitutes. The stems, the rachis on Indian Crow does tend to be a bit hard. So if you plan to pinch the rachis a little bit, um, you kind of have to figure out a balance of pressure. Um, squeeze too hard, and because of how thin the stem is, you could go through all the way through the stem and ruin it. Um, on the other hand, too soft, you don't pinch it enough, and you can, they're very rounded. So when you tie it in on the top of the hook, it could roll one way or another, um, making it a little bit off kilter. So. When you're tying them in, using wax is very, very highly recommended. Um, same thing with the subs. Wax is highly recommended. And as you can see here with these feathers, these are uh, Kotenga Kotenga. Uh, we'll get to those in just a minute. But as you can see, they've been trimmed down the stem a little bit and not stripped. Being trimmed down the stem like that, um, that allows your thread to have a little bit of bite and that'll also keep the feather from rolling uh, too much on the hook shank. So that's about Indian Crow. Um, I don't unfortunately have any of the other species. I've only got the Scatatus Statatus, but um, you know there are very beautiful feather um, even just to have in your collection. Um, but Indian Crows are a protected species. Um, once Feathers from inside the country are legal to own. Um, it's the importation of them that is illegal. Uh, that is through the city's CITES uh, regulations. All of these species are. Um, but the Indian crow is not an endangered species. Um, 
Uh, in fact, they are somewhat of a nuisance in South America. Um, they are also not, their, their real name is the red ruffed fruit crow. And reason for that being is that um, they have a tendency to raid fruit farms and, you know, become quite a, quite a pain in the butt out on the fruit farms. Um, but there are uh, a large population of them in South America, but they roost up in higher elevations, uh, in high in the treetops. So seeing them is, um, I guess, somewhat hard other than catching them at the fruit farms. So any of the feathers that, you know, you obtain from when you, within the U.S., um, or if you're in another country, typically these feathers are uh, from either retired museum specimens or uh, from old collections that are pre-1947. I believe that was the year that uh, Cities was instated. Um, Got to make sure not to move too fast or breathe too hard around these things. So Indian crow, um, it is legal to obtain when it's within your country. Crossing borders, um, you know, buying them and having them shipped from the United States to Canada, United States to Europe, um, that is um, actually illegal. So uh, at, that's the same with any of these. Um, now Cotingas, uh, we'll get into those. Let me uh, just pack away these subs here in the Indian crow. Um, as I pack these up, uh, I'll let you know that um, the video for using these materials will be out um, in a couple of days. I'm actually going to tie a Jock Scott again. I know I've done it on the channel before, but uh, this one I'm going to be using all authentic materials. So that way you can see what it's like uh, when I tie with real Indian Crow, Kotinga, and Toucan. Uh, since the Jock Scott actually does contain all three. These Kotingas just want to fly away on me. Okay. Um, I also want to talk about one more sub that you can use for Indian Crow. Bear with me just a moment. It is from the backside of a golden pheasant head. So when you buy your golden pheasant heads, if you flip them over, the majority of them, this is actually the throat feathers, but if you look at the majority of the heads that you buy, they'll come with these feathers. Um, a lot of the um, people that actually dry these out and harvest them, uh, they don't remove this part. So if you get right up underneath here, you'll see that some of these actually do have a reddish to them. And you can dye these, you know, you can dye the black a little darker and the red tips a little bit darker, but if you want to look at that, next to that, it's really not that far off. Um, this defined black line here is a bit more um, noticeable. But when you're looking at the fly from the side, or if you're fishing with the fly, uh, this will give just about the same presentation as a crow feather. So, you know, there are crow subs that are actually relatively inexpensive to get a hold of. And, uh, you know, these heads can serve a, a triple purpose. You can get your tips, your tippets, your crests, and some crow sub uh, with the majority of them. So uh, keep an eye out for that. and. Um, you know, try plucking some of these out of here and seeing how they do. Um, I, I do use them from time to time on fishing flies, uh, but typically with my um, framed flies or flies from my videos, I'll use, uh, you know, Ryan Houston's or uh, David Kerr's Crow Sub.
All right. So now on to the toucan. Um, this is aerial toucan. There are several different types of, there's actually a uh, dozen or two types of toucans. Um, however, the, the majority of the ones that are used are uh, aerial toucan, Swanson's toucan, uh, Arachiri toucan. Um, this is the Arachiri toucan. As you can see, it's um, it's got more of a gray base and a very bright yellow tip on them. Um, this is more of like a lemon color, they would call it. But I'll tell you, the this toucan here is actually quite difficult to deal with. Uh, if you want to see uh, the trouble that I've gone through with this, take a look at my video for the uh, Bronze Pirate. And when I started with the tail, I started with the Arachiri toucan first, and that just... It was just terrible. Uh, these are a very, very hard stemmed feather, and the uh, they constantly want to roll, and uh, they're just. I tried everything. I tried using um, wax. I tried using adhesive. I tried using um, thin set uh, or not thin set. Excuse me, um, head cement and. Uh, Sally Henson's it just it, it was a nightmare. So I wound up going with um, some lighter aerial toucan which That would be this one here, but I, I'm not hundred percent certain that this is actually aerial toucan That's what it was labeled as when I got it, but um, I Don't know that very well could be Swanson's toucan actually it, it seems to me to be a little bit too light for aerial um, but this here would be the aerial toucan and as you can see this is two feathers So you can see how kind of thin these are um, Typically like with the jock Scott There's toucan veiling over the top and the bottom of the first body segment and these here um, I believe on the jock Scott there is three on top and three on the bottom uh, and That's to give it a nice bright profile and you'll be able to actually see the feathers if you put one in yes you can still see it but it's not as vibrant and it doesn't stand out as much so using three um, works better now if you can't find toucan obviously there is a substitute which is CDC um, I get this from feathers MC and as you can see this is quite a bit thicker and larger and if you pull through, pick through the package, you can find some that are a bit smaller. Now these do leave a pretty decent profile um, when you put them onto a fly. And one of these will make up for three toucan. So as you can see, you can kind of work it a little bit. And you can get that to thin out a little. And then you get your nice side profile that you can lay over the top and bottom of your hook. This would be a bit of a large, <clears throat> excuse me, this would be a bit of a large feather for this hook, um, but you could always trim it down, tie it in about here, and use just that. And you'll still get the ni a nice product like you're looking for. CDC is really um, one of the best. Um, there's there's different ones. There's you know weavers and um, bishops and stuff. Other types of birds that you can use, but these are pretty readily available, um, pre-dyed, ready to go. So you can get those at feathersmc.com. Um, and I believe he does have other ones as well that are darker. He's got an orange one that is a really great cock of the rock sub. We'll, uh, we'll do cock of the rock in another video. I'm moving on to uh, Cotinga Cotinga. This is one of the subspecies of Cotingas. These feathers aren't exactly the best quality. Um, but they kind of give you an idea of the feather itself. Let's go with this one here since it's got all its fuzz. Um, this is uh, the darker of the subspecies. This is used in a lot of different flies. Uh, typically this one is more common in the black Argus salmon fly 
which I will be doing uh, this year. That will be uh, that's on the schedule. Um, the ones used for the Black Argus are typically much larger. Uh, I would even say larger than this. Um, but these are a, a decent example of the color. Uh, there's not too many subs out there that are good for this. Um, one of the better subs for the color wise anyway is the uh, is Fairy Bluebird. A fairy Bluebird is also a larger feather, as you can see, um, but it's also a rounder, broader feather, whereas the Kotinga has more of a point to it. Um, but the Fairy Bluebird is a beautiful feather, and color on it is um, pretty close. I actually do have a Fairy Bluebird. I'm not sure if... Uh, how well you'll be able to see the whole thing. But that's the back on a fairy bluebird, which is also known as the enameled thrush. This one is not for use um, or for sale. But they are a very beautiful bird. Um, the plumage is wonderful. Um, these tail feathers right here are typically used for a fly um, called the lapwing. Um, that was my original intention for this this bird, but um, he's he's too beautiful. I, I I can't bring myself to to do that. So it remains it'll remain unused. But um, fairy bluebird feathers are no, I wouldn't say readily available, but they're often seen on on eBay. Um, some of the groups, sometimes on Facebook, someone will have a few for sale. So keep an eye out for those, if that's what you're interested in. They're also good for, um, you know, some artistic flies as well. Okay, so there's, I, I neglected to mention, there's also several subspecies of Cotingas. Um, I, I don't know all of them offhand. Uh, there's the Cotinga Cayana, which would be this one down here. This is the Cotinga Cotinga. There's a Cotinga Amabilis. Um, a purple Cotinga, also known as a Pompadour Cotinga. I do have a few of those feathers as well. These are a longer feather. They're a bit more, I don't want to say stringy, but kind of more fibrous, I'll say. Um, but again, these are also a, a beautiful colored feather. There's not very many patterns that I know of that require it, um, so I just, I haven't really needed to use it. But again, these are uh, another beautiful feather, as they are a very beautiful bird. Now the thing about Cotingas, um, the Cayana is, you know, you'll see a lot of the Cayana used in cheeks, um, tail veilings, things like that. Um, a good substitute for the Cayana, which you see often, and you'll see a lot in my videos, is um, Kingfisher. So this is a full Kingfisher skin, and typically you'll see a lot of the Cayana subs come from down here in the rump. Um, either the rump or mid-back, which would be these feathers right here. These are probably the best sub for um, Cayenne. And kingfisher skins are not overly expensive. Those are, um, I believe, really, they're, they're pretty easy to find. I know Feathers MC does have some. They do turn up on eBay often. Um, and they're typically, I think, around 25 bucks for a full skin. So, um, well worth it, and, uh, you know, you get a lot of feathers out of them. And they're a great substitute. They match the color relatively well. Um, the one thing I will say uh, about Cotingas in general is that the Cotinga, the rachis on them, you can't see it by looking at it here, 
but the rackets is actually almost triangular shaped and that makes them kind of difficult to work with. Um, they're also another um, hard stem, hard rackets feather. So pinching them can be a little bit difficult, especially if since it's a triangular shape when you try to pinch them flat, they'll literally just flip to the side very quickly um, one way or another. So tying them in takes a great deal of patience and um, you know, definitely some wax involved. Uh, but again, if you can, uh, you know, tie with them, they are an absolutely gorgeous feather. And they're used in a lot of different patterns, just like the Indian crow is. So, and the last feather that I actually want to discuss a little bit that I've got here is um, Magnificent Rifle Bird of Paradise. Now, these are not a very commonly used feather. There's not a lot of flies that use them. Um, this is an assortment that I have that I'm likely never going to use. Um, they're not overly expensive to get a hold of, um, and typically you do see some on eBay. Uh, they're not, I wouldn't say difficult to find, but they're not easy to get a hold of, um, at least to get in, you know, multiple sizes like this. But uh, they are a beautiful feather, and a, a good substitute for these would be like the head feathers from a ringneck pheasant. Um, that nice bright green color. Uh, I do have a couple of ringnecks, but I don't have any of the, the feathers right now pulled off of it. Uh, but many of you I know out there, um, if you watch my channel, you're likely a fly tire, and you've seen the head on a ringneck pheasant. Those feathers are very, very close. Uh, they don't have the eye that you see here in the middle of these but uh, the color is very close that iridescent green that metallic color um, I do love these and I do I have used them in the past if you look at my video on the Ron Lucas tribute fly I used quite a bit of rifle bird in there um, so um, just another beautiful feather they're easy to work with they're easy to tie in uh, and I just thought I would show those to you since we're discussing what I call my pretty little birds. And pricing on these, um, Rifle Bird you can probably get a 10 pack of some small to medium-ish sized feathers for right around 35 or 40 dollars. Um, I, but I would say right, right around the $35 range. Kotinga is, Kotinga Kayana is about the same, you know, right in the $30 to $35 range for 10. Um, the, uh, Kotinga Kotinga is usually a little bit more expensive. These are a little bit harder to find, um, as these are a little bit more endangered, um, uh, of the blue Kotingas. But, um, these I would say typically... $45 to maybe 50 for 10 of them. Um, whereas the Toucan, you can probably find right in the $35 to $40 range as well for a 10 pack. Again, you can find these on eBay. Um, if you search search by name, either by Indian Crow, search uh, Toucan Feather, Kotinga Feathers, or you can just type in um, salmon fly tying, and that'll bring up a very large list of different fly tying materials for salmon flies. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's my rundown on these feathers. And again, like I said, I will be doing a Jock Scott um, later in the week, probably Wednesday to Thursday. The video will be out, and you'll have uh, you'll get to see me use all of these, except for these, the uh, Kotinga Kotinga. I won't be using, but I'll be using. Indian Crow, um, Aerial Toucan, and Kotinga Kayana. So uh, all that being said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. If there was something that you, um, that I didn't mention that you really wanted to know about, um, please let me know. Um, either reach out to me, say something in the comments, and I'm always happy to do another video. Uh, even if it's a short video, you know, five or ten minutes to cover one specific topic or one specific material, just let me know. I'm happy to do that for you. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful week. Happy Monday, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Talk to you then.